Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Cam, and I finally watched Eyes Wide Shut. This was directed by Stanley Kubrick. Infamously, this would be Kubrick's final film before his passing, and it starred Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman, among others. It was released in 1999, and it was based on the short story written by Arthur Schnitzler. I believe I'm saying his name right. That was entitled Dream Story. It tells the story of a married couple named Will and Alice, played by Cruz and Kidman, respectively. On paper, they seem to have the perfect marriage. They love each other. They have a beautiful daughter named Helena. Tom Cruise's character, Will, is a very successful doctor. They go to very rich parties. Like, what all could go wrong in this situation? Well, one night after having let, in the words of the Grateful Dead, one toke over the line... Nicole, uh, Alice basically tells Will that she had a dream of dropping everything in their life and having a torrid sexual affair with a sailor. Will doesn't take this super well, so over the course of 24 hours, he wanders around New York City looking for, I suppose, a way to get her back. And, well, long story short, he stumbles upon a weird cult that wear masks and like to have sex. And that's your movie. As mentioned previously, this was Stanley Kubrick's last movie. Six days after, after showing the final cut to Warner Brothers executives, he sadly passed away. He was supposed to direct AI Artificial Intelligence, which would have been produced by his friend, Steven Spielberg. However, that never happened. Kubrick acquired the rights to make Dream Story into a movie, Back in 1968, the same year as a little movie called 2001 A Space Odyssey was released, he initially envisioned it as making it some kind of a sex comedy starring either Steve Martin or Woody Allen. For many reasons, it's a good thing he did not go in that direction. In my research, I was not able to find what made him lean more in the direction that he leaned towards in, but it's a good thing that he didn't go the comedy route. Cruz and Kidman were not the first couple to be considered for the roles of Will and Alice. Initially, it was going to be Alec Baldwin and Kim Basinger. However, they had commitments to other projects, so they had to drop out. After visiting Kubrick's estate, Cruz and Kidman, who were legitimately married at the time, they liked the idea so much that they committed, and Kubrick even made them sign written documents saying that they would not commit to any other projects until Eyes Wide Shut was in the camp. And in other minor roles, a role that would eventually go to Sidney Pollock was initially supposed to go to Harvey Keitel. He was even filmed shooting several scenes for the movie. However, he had to drop out, again, due to a scheduling conflict. And also, one more note before I jump into the review itself, I just found this fascinating. In the scene, I in the scene in which Cruz is in the cult room and is about to is told to take his clothes off there is a woman who basically sacrifices herself it's the woman who crew who will saved at the party from overdosing the woman is the woman is a different actress but that voice was the voice of Kate Blanchett and I just did not believe it. I did not recognize her voice. But apparently, the actress that they got to play, the girl, couldn't do a convincing American accent, and Blanchett could. So Blanchett got the dub. And considering the fact that this was just a couple years before Lord of the Rings, that's just a crazy little footnote to have. I consider myself a fan of Stanley Kubrick. I love 2001. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. The Shining is my favorite horror movie of all time. I have a lot of respect for the for A Clockwork Orange. I'm a big fan of this man's work. However, when it comes to Eyes Wide Shut, I don't know why I've always... I've always felt like I put this one off. I really can't put my finger on why, but I said that I would eventually watch it and review it for this channel, and so here I am. And now that I have seen it, my initial reaction can best be described as this. What? I'm filming this on Friday afternoon. I watched this movie Tuesday night, 
And so from that point up to now, I just decided to just give a good long think about how I felt about the movie because I didn't want to film after my first initial reaction because I don't know if I would have been in the right frame of mind. I'm glad that I waited because as I sit here, I can definitively say that I have a lot of respect for the movie, but I weirdly respect it more than I like it. I respect the craft. I just... One, I'm just wondering why the movie was so weird. First and foremost, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman were naturally good in their roles. Cruise is on screen for most of the movie, and I would say that this would be peak Cruise, but considering the fact that this man from the Mission Impossible movies is planning on going to space, the man never had a peak. At first, you kind of notice that, okay, these two really do love each other. But then as things transpire, there's this seed of doubt that's planted in both of their heads to where it's initially like, oh, it's nothing. But then it's clearly not nothing and things just degenerate from there. There's a, sev there's a several minute long scene after they take the very bad pot where, where Kimmich is grilling Cruz about how when he has a female patient, does he think in pure thoughts? And he's like, no, no, I don't. And she doesn't believe him for a second. But he's like, you're my wife. I love you. It, it's acted way better than I'm doing it right now. But it's it's a really good scene. It really is the Cruz and Kidman show. They are pretty much the focus of the story, which I did appreciate. There are several other characters, one of whom is played by Sidney Pollack, who would end up winning an Oscar for Tootsie. But this is the Cruz and Kidman show. They are by far and away the most interesting characters, and it was a good thing that they were spotlighted. The movie looks absolutely stunning. The camera work reminds me quite a bit of a, the camera work in A Clockwork Orange. A lot of unbroken, handheld shots where the camera just moves around and there's a lot of, there's dissolves, but there's just a lot of movement of the camera. It's not, it's almost never sitting still. And it's not in the shaky cam kind of sense. It's in the sense of you're just in deep with all of these characters. And it's all done very well. All the Kubrick trademarks are here. The classical music. The main character staring off endlessly into the distance. Tom Cruise has a very good Kubrick stare. And this being a Kubrick film, it's weird. And there are no easy answers to the questions posed. Throughout the movie, I was thinking to myself, why is Will being like this? Because it's very clear, at least to me, that this was just a dream. So, like, why is Will freaking out about this so much? And then when Will is, like, considering cheating on his wife, I guess as sort of a get back on her, is like, you're kind of making the situation worse, my dude. You could have easily just said, you know what, baby, we're fine this stuff happens, we're humans, like, come back to bed. It's like, that could have easily just put a, put a, put a pin in the situation. But no, he decides, you know what? All right, bet. And similar to Kubrick's work, there are many different interpretations of what the movie means. In my research, I found that because this movie takes place on or around Christmas time, it basically means that Will is being tempted by Satan and Christmas is meant to be more angelic and dreamlike and he's being challenged by Satan or some, so some sort of evil to kind of test his mettle to see how much he truly does love his family. Again, it's, it's an interpretation, but it is there. A critic I follow named Alonzo Duralde called this movie a Christmas movie for grown-ups. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it definitely applies. I guess when it comes to this movie, it'll be like how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? The world will never know. And just for more clarification on the fact that I respect the movie more than I like it, the movie is very long. It's nearly three hours long, and like two hours and 40 minutes to three hours long. And you do feel the runtime quite a bit. And like I said, because there are no easy answers, there are several scenes where I was just sitting there like, just get to the point, please. Ultimately, 
This is a very poetic end to the career of Stanley Kubrick. It looks great. The cast is great. The soundtrack is great. It It's filmed very well. Technically, the movie is outstanding. But it's going to be a movie that is going to take a long time for me to really think about and give like a definitive like answer on whether I whether I like it but respect it or don't like it and think it's frustrating but I still respect it but respect is the main thesis of this review you have seen Eyes Wide Shut what did you think about it leave your thoughts in the comments I'd love to read what you have to say and next week staying in the year of 1999 but talking about an animated movie that has gotten a lot of respect nowadays but back then kind of bummed but considering the talent behind it including its director brad bird yeah we're all kind of terrible people for letting this movie bomb initially it's 1999's the iron giant but if you like this video please be sure to leave a like comment your thoughts down below and if you like this video and you want to see more like it hit the subscribe button and click the bell to allow notifications that way when a new video drops you'll be the first to know about it my name is ryan cam and i'll see you in the next one